welcome to the Linux Lads. As always, uh, I'm Shane. I'm Connor. And we have a special edition this uh, this week. Um, we have Mark from the Binary Times. How are you, Mark? I'm great. How are you? Hi, everyone. Grand stuff. Um, the uh, the reason he's here is that uh, Mike is currently uh, sunning his arse in Spain at the moment. So, um, or somewhere, maybe, I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, so Mark has kindly agreed to step into his uh, large shoes. So um, without further ado, um, first of all, uh, we have an, a coupon code for Azire VPN. So they uh, that gets you 30% off their three-month plan. Um, they're a security-focused VPN provider based in Sweden, where the law doesn't require them to log traffic. Um, they operate servers in Europe and North America. Their servers are owned and not rented, installed on location by their engineers, and running Debian Linux. I realize I said Debian in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they provide a WireGuard and open VPN option. Their client is GPL version 2 licensed and is available on Linux. Uh, they take all major payment methods, including crypto. Um, also, you don't even have to give them an email address. So uh, the code is Linux Lads. Make sure to uh, uh, click the green add code button to get the discount. And that's valid until the 1st of January 2020. So without further ado... Um, Connor, you put this one in, and actually I saw this as well. Uh, they have a new uh, li- like Linux App Store website. It lets you find apps across all the different, um, like the Snap Store and the Flat Hub and everything. Yeah, um, I, somebody messaged me this on Telegram. I um, name escapes me at the moment. I it could have been um, Amulet. Uh, anyway, um, I will I will double check that and I'll I'll give a shout out in the show notes. Um, what it is, is essentially it's a, uh, a web store and you search and let's say you're searching for something like even something proprietary like Discord or, uh, something like that. Um, like, uh, Microsoft's Visual Studio Code or something. And you type it in and it says, this is available as a flat pack, a snap an app image, uh, whatever it's available for, and you click on your preference and, or you might type in something and it's only available as a flat pack, in which case the, the, only the flat pack will come up. So, um, you can pick and choose whichever a source that you want, your installation source, or if there's only one available, then uh, that's the way you go, rather than having to go through, uh, your distribution uh, repos, um, doing your app get if you're on Debian or Ubuntu or doing your, your Pac-Man commands or your uh, DNF commands if you're on, uh, Pac-Man commands if you're on Arch or your DNF commands if you're on Fedora or something like that. Um, it's just simple. Click on it and it's available in those respective stores, the Flatpak store, the Snapback Snap store or the app image store is just a centralized way of searching for software, which I think is is a very useful thing to to have. Yeah, I was just looking at the uh, the screenshots of it there. Um, it looks very googly, and I did hear, I did read in the article as well that um, other people thought so too with the the material design and everything. Um, but you know, it looks slick, like it looks good. Um, I, I personally wouldn't use it that much because uh, the Ubuntu software center kind of already does that. So it, it collects uh, flat packs and snaps. Um, well, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't do flat packs by default. You would have to uh, add, add it in that, as far yeah. as oh, it's just snaps, is it? It's, yeah, it's just snaps. This, snaps uh, and this, re- yeah. And if you're on Fedora or something like that, Fedora is, is a big champion of flat packs. Um, so if you search for in their GNOME software, um, center or whatever you want to call it, um, that will only show flatbacks. So there might be something that's only available as a snap and won't appear there. So they are kind of, um, walling themselves off into little gardens where vast majority of things are available for all three platforms, but some things may not be available in one, may be available in the other or, and so on and so forth. So rather than adding, uh, Flatpak support if you're on Ubuntu or adding Snap support on if you're in Fedora, 
this way it's you just search for something like VLC or something and it will say this is available for all three platforms and then you click on the flat pack if that's your preference or your snap if that's your preference and it will give you um, instructions on how to install it. Yeah, I think it. I don't think it. Uh, it does uh, anything um, like install it for you or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I just I'll actually opened it up here just to have a look. Um, it just seems to take you to whatever. Um, app yeah, Manager, that's what, You know. Yeah, I was just looking at Stellarium there. Yeah, it took me to um, the Flatpak store, or no app app image. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I yeah, I'm I'm clicking around as I'm on the website here. I just clicked on Etcher and it literally yeah, it brings you to whatever version that is. So if it's an app image, it brings you to the app image store. Uh, if it's a flat pack, it'll bring you to the the flat hub. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely useful. Mark. Absolutely. Do you know what I like the most about it is the little um little icon in the the bottom left corner it tells you whether it's an app image, uh, a snap or a flat pack. That's really nice because when you look at, you know, the Ubuntu store, you might have uh, two different applications and you don't really know whether it's a snap or a, a deb. Yeah, I've noticed that myself, actually, like two versions come up and you don't actually know which one which is, is the which? snap and which one is the native one um, until you click into it. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's very true. I was going just going to point that out. If you click into it and then you scroll down and it says source, this is coming from um, Snap, this is coming from Flatpak, this is coming from uh, the default repositories. But mm-hmm. you you would have to drill down and go down to the bottom. There we go. A little feature request for Canonical. <laughs> um, Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Connor, um, you also put in uh, the Librem One campaign will uh, de Google your life for seven dollars ninety nine per month. Um, so they're the privacy oriented like Linux device company. Um, we've all heard of them, I'm sure. Uh, they've launched a bundle of mobile apps and services for Android and iOS. So I don't know. Um, it's a bold claim, but like, I don't know. I, I haven't actually honestly seen any demonstrations of this. So I haven't really looked at it too much lately. So, you know, for all I know, it's brilliant, but I, I'm, I'm doubtful a little bit. Um, yeah, this is from Purism. So Purism do their Librem laptops. Uh, they're also launching their, uh, Librem 5 phone wh- whenever that comes out. We, we, we don't know, but, um, yeah. they've all, so this is, uh, their Librem 1 campaign, which is a secure cloud essentially. So they're doing Librem Mail, which is an encrypted email client, which um, presumably just will be able to do um it's a client so you'll be able to add on your own email. Uh, they'll also um do their at Librem one, I think, domain. Uh Librem Chat is just essentially is Matrix, so a Matrix messaging app. So you'll be able to chat to anyone on Matrix even if they're not in this Librem Chat service. Um, or you can, you can install your, your matrix app of choice and also speak to this Librem chat. You don't have to use their app. Um, and I, there's something, something else. Uh, oh yeah. I, oh yeah. Their, their Librem social is, I think, I believe is just Mastodon, Mastodon. So they're, they're, um, they're using decentralized, um, established, um, Either chat in the in the case of Matrix or Macedon in the case of their social. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's just very. Um, I don't know. I'm not convinced. Um, I, I it could be I, now the fact that they're charging for it could could hurt initially. Um, Mark, have you seen this or? I have, yeah. And to be honest, when I saw it first, I I thought it was great. You know, I love the idea because you're going to have all these services. Uh, you're going to have your laptop, your tablet, your phone, all using the same operating system and all being able to use these services. You know, I, it's a very compelling. Um, Hello. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> my phone is talking to me. <laughs> What's that about? Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, you know, it's a very compelling uh, collection of services they're putting together for everyone and um i I really like the idea but thinking about it you're just thinking they're taking on a lot Uh, okay they're using existing open source software and everything and they're just uh rebadging it grand 
I'd prefer to see them partnering with someone that's already doing this and maybe reselling reselling it rather than trying to do it all on their own. Um, I don't know, have they any expertise in this at all? Um, it's not easy to kind of uh, just build up infrastructure overnight. Um, like I was a, an Ubuntu One customer myself. You know, I did the whole music thing and everything and, and that went by the wayside. And Ubuntu is a much larger company than than um, Purism. Um, I'd really love to see it succeed. Um, I'd love to know how they're going to do it. That's that's my take on it. Yeah, yeah. This, the, the, they, uh, last I heard, they completely burned through their crowdfunding money. Um, yeah, so they, they, they're really at the they're really at the mercy of, of uh, their promises here. Like it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, again, like I'm, I'm, I'm negative about it, but like I do, I, of course wish them well, like, because it's, it's a very admirable project. So it's, you know, we need people like this, you know, trying at least, you know, to, even if they don't get it right, fuck it. Like just someone else will pick up the, pick up what you did and do it a little bit better. And that'll just keep happening. Like, so it's it's good like any th any effort is better than no effort you know absolutely but that's the thing as well they're pitching it very cheap i think cuz like i i'm getting email well i get my email kind of a, a group wear thing through collab but it costs about 120 euros a year you know whereas they're pitching mail chat vpn and social networking for 71 dollars a year yeah uh uh, seven ninety nine seven ninety nine a month. Uh, you know, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get the latest um, pricing. But yeah, uh, from the headline that I see, it's seven ninety nine a month. Yeah, that's. I guess it's not bad if you're willing to pay it. Like, I think it's it's very cheap to be offering that amount of services for that price, and I wonder how sustainable is it. Yeah, it'd be interesting to give it a test drive if it ever became available in some fashion. Mm. But um but yeah. Um moving on to the next story we have there. Um Mark, you put this in. Uh, Canonical cons consolidates open infrastructure support and security offerings. So, uh, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, it's just something that uh, Canonical announced um when I saw it I thought it was interesting. Um they've announced Ubuntu Advantage for infrastructure which is uh, consolidating enterprise security, compliance and support offering uh, that covers the full range of open source infrastructure capabilities for up to 10 years. Right. So what they're saying from from the, the blurb is the, the new approach continues Canonical's tradition of driving down costs and sets a new bar for efficiency in large scale enterprise, sorry, Linux enterprise operations. And it stands in direct contrast to the complexity and cost of offerings from Red Hat and VMware, which require additional licenses per host or per VM for capabilities like OpenStack, OpenStack and Kubernetes. And I, I don't know a lot about uh, Red Hat licensing, but I know VMware can be a bit of a, a nightmare from what I understand. Uh, so, I mean, if Canonical can provide, you know, a consolidated enterprise offering, I would imagine it would be very attractive for a lot of CIOs out there, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's um that's a very good point. Um like I've only got limited kind of exposure to uh, enterprise level infrastructure, but uh, you know, I have a I have a broad understanding, I would I would say. Um but yeah, I mean uh, Canonical are on the up and up, like they're doing well, so you know, I'm sure they're making the right decisions there. Um, you know, they're, they're going hard at the cloud, the cloud, the cloud okay. space, like, like it's cool. Like it's cool. To, it's like, it's another red hat, really. Like you, you love to see open source companies doing well, like no matter what, you yes. know, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next up we have, uh, red hat has changed their logo for the first time in 20 years. So, uh, I actually had a look at this just right now. Um, it looks, it looks quite nice. I actually quite like it. Um, it's, it's definitely more. Like the the existing Red Hat logo did have a very nineties kind of vibe to it, um. But uh, but yeah, the new one is good. It's very kind of Silicon Valley techy startupy looking. <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. 
Why didn't they do this years ago? Back in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is. I. I definitely do like the the new logo. It's 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 cleaner. It's more modern. Um. I. I. It's more recognizable if you if you're to mm. turn it into monochrome. Um. They've updated their their font for for the the text of of Red Hat itself as well, and for just to to, um. Uh, get rid of the devil's advocate argument. Some or some people are saying, "Oh, they're doing this now because they've been acquired by IBM." Apparently, um, apparently this has uh, was in in an internal project for uh, a number of a number of years, like a, a year or two, and um, the IBM talks was only in the last twelve months. So, um, I don't think there's any credence to saying that uh, this was a. a a direction coming from IBM management or anything like that. Mm. I think this was uh, something that Red Hat were thinking about doing for a long time, but it's, it's definitely, it's, it's cleaner. It's, it's, um, probably more recognizable from a distance, which is a very good thing. Yeah. Um, the old ones, um, I think the, uh, the nickname for their logo was the Shadow Man. Yeah. It looks like a, a kind of a black hat hacker kind of logo, like. Doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it, it, pro, pro, that was probably genuinely. It's it's it, it was probably. Uh, this is all specu- speculation, but that was probably <laughs> its or, its origins. I mean, the whole black hat, grey hat, white hat. It's like, oh, but we're red hat, red hat and yeah. and that probably just stuck. That was probably genuinely its origins. But uh, anyway, that's is all speculation. Uh, I've I've no idea where where its origins of its logo were from. But um, yeah, that'd be interesting to find out. Um. We'll move on uh, to uh, the next uh, bit of news there. Mark put in uh, Windows 10 is getting a Microsoft built Linux kernel. That, yeah, I saw that. That was, uh, that's curious. All right. Like, but not, not all that surprising, to be honest, because they, they heart Linux these days, as we all know. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was just like check, checking out the article there. It's, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of what you expect. I don't know. Yeah, like, um, I mean, Jack posted on the, the dev blog of Microsoft that, um, beginning with the, the Windows Insider builds this summer, they're including an in-house custom built Linux kernel to underpin the newest version of Windows subsystem for Linux. I mean, for me, it makes total sense. You know, why, why emulate a kernel when you can, you know, have an actual kernel there, you know, makes, makes things work better um <laughs> and you know like i mean they've already got a linux underpinning for that azure operating system haven't they yeah they they have their own linux distribution that they they run on uh, azure i forget what they what they've named it but yes. uh, yeah yeah so i i suppose it's just following on from that and uh it should make it a lot easier to do proper proper Linux work on Windows. Now, look, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, with the whole, uh, dare I say it, you know, the whole embrace, extend, extinguish kind of malarkey. <laughs> but, um, oh, <yeah. laughs> you know, um, look, it's it's good. And I think that the more, well, it can neither be good from the respect that, okay, People are getting more exposure to to free software and everything, and that's always a good thing. But I suppose on the flip side, they're going to be there using Windows uh, to access that free software, their free Linux kernel and everything. And um, you've got all the telemetry that Windows is sending back to Microsoft still doing its thing in the background. So for me personally, if I wanted to use Linux, I'd just use Linux. I wouldn't, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was thinking Windows, that myself. You know. I can see both sides of the argument of the, the Windows subsystem for Linux. I mean, there's there's some peop, some places where... Uh, you're you're given a computer by work in, in work, and it's it's Windows, and yeah. that's it. Yeah. Uh, and if it, it's the kind of thing of it's an IT policy that's kind of was kind of is set by upper management. And even if you go to the IT guy saying, listen, I'm, I'm running Ubuntu. I'm running whatever. You know, it's secure. It's, you know, and you as oh, I'm sorry, but it's policy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's completely over above his head. This is 
a way of just saying, OK, I'm running Windows because I have to run Windows. But in order to get my job done, I need SSH, I need Bash, I need whatever. Um, and this is just a, is, is a nice way of doing that. Um, Absolutely. And I can... I can also see the argument of this. Oh, well, um, you're, you're kind of giving, uh, people water in, in a, in a dry desert kind of thing of <laughs> you're introducing, introducing a bit of freedom to them. And it's, or it's, it's not just that. It's the kind of some of these tools are genuinely as good, um, enterprise tools, if not better enterprise tools than the ones that are available for, for Windows. So, um, Gateway drug. Hey man, here's yeah. your free Linux. Try some more. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, we've got uh, Ubuntu 1910 is to be named uh, e- e- Eowyn Ermin. Ermin. Eowyn Ermin. <laughs> what the fuck I, is that? I, I literally... Um, I, I saw to... this earlier. I've been trying to pronounce it all day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, know. I don't I'm, know. I'm the exact I same thing. I... I, I <laughs> I looked this shit up and I, I googled it and I looked it up on freaking or uh, I'm using Google just as 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 a w- word of saying I searched for it. So I actually looked it up on Duck, 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 Um and apparently it it's just another name for what we would call a stoat. So it's like, so it's quite yeah, the- I saw a picture of an ermine. I was like, oh, that's very cute. And then <laughs> but I was like, I was like an ermine. I thought that was like the fur or something. I didn't realize that was the animal. But, uh, I, what does I, I, I Eowyn think, mean? Uh, I I looked that up and it, it, I looked it up as kind of like dawn into the dawn or, or something, or, isn't it? Yeah, early morning or something like yeah. that. So it's essentially it's like calling it dawn stoat. <laughs> yeah, if you want the translation of it, but That's of course, rubbish. of course, it doesn't. Neither of those begin with e, so they can't use it. <laughs> That's so bad. I don't like it. Sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Ubuntu. I don't like it. I um, mean, going from Disco I'm, Dingo to uh, uh, <laughs> you know, going, what? <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, I, I, they're never. It's, it's like freaking um, beefy miracle for um, for Fedora. Fedora. They're never going to live. <laughs> they're never live, going to live down Disco Dingo. Disco Dingo is absolutely fantastic yeah, as yeah. a name. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to do. It's, it's the it's the tragic second album. <laughs> they're, not, they're, they're not they're not living up to the the disco dingo. Indeed. Yeah, that was good, and uh, yeah, the art and stuff for disco dingo was great. Um, but yeah, they had some strange ones in the past as well. Like they've had like uh, what was the um, oh, blimey, what was it? Um, oh, I can't remember the name there, now. Uh, there there was Hardy Heron. <laughs> Dapper yeah, Drake. it was around that era, you know. Um, AGS. Anyway, yeah, there was mm. uh, like Oryx or Eryx or. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, there was there were some crazy Onyx. ones around there. The, what was that? Yeah, there were some crazy ones around that time. Your Ibex, <laughs> Ibex, Ibex. I, I think it was. Oh, okay. I think it wasn't. It was Onyx or something like that. Anyway, Ibex yeah. or something. Like, Ibex yeah, as you're well, right. Yeah. Some, actually, no. In retrospect, like that. that's that's a bit cool. Actually, um. <laughs> uh, Intrepid Ibex wasn't it? I think. Oh yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I actually yeah. liked that one. And what was the Onyx one? An- Ancelus? No. Ah, God. Anyway. <laughs> or Cosmic Cuttlefish. Cosmic Cuttlefish was a good name. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's that's what I've got on my laptop right at the moment. That You're just cosmic. the the images I saw of that just always reminded me it was real kind of Call of Cthulhu stuff, like you know. <laughs> yeah, it has that vibe, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was very it was very tentacly. Was um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, surprisingly enough, cuttlefish are not that tentacly. Uh, they do have tentacles, but like um, squids or the, uh, squid and octopuses are kind of are the ones that are really long kind of tentacles, but not so much cuttlefish. Cuttlefish are cuttlefish quite interesting or like are um, really really good with their um, color changes, and they can kind of do really fast pulses of of, of waves of color across their bodies. They're actually supposed to be really good at it. I've seen a lot of videos. Anyway, getting that off. Sounds, uh, yeah, uh, sounds very trippy. It would have made yeah. for fantastic Get, getting off, <laughs> getting off into getting off into my Edinburgh moment. Um, <laughs> up next, we have the boners. So uh, yes, we're going to try and start doing this a little bit more regularly. Um, because uh, we like it. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so Connor, um, Luno S. That's what you put down. 
Yeah, um, Luna OS is something that I came across just very recently. And if anyone remembers WebOS from um, Palm, who was there around the around the time when uh, iOS and Android were in their early days, uh, WebOS from Palm was their own kind of rival um, to it. And then they didn't seem to get the, the traction that they want, they'd wanted and iOS and Android just kind of shot up. So they were kind of floundering for a while. Eventually, got, I think they, um, they got bought by, uh, HP. HP, and then, yeah, that's uh, right. And, and then they, then it, it got sold and it was, it's now from in, bought by uh, LG. So if you buy an LG smart TV, the operating system that is running on the smart TV is actually WebOS. Um, but this is a community, LunaOS is a community forked version of WebOS continuing on essentially what the pre phones, the Palm pre phones were using. Um, and but hang on, Connor. Commun- yeah. Wasn't who open sourced WebOS? Was it HP or LG? Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I do know it's open source, but I don't don't know um, who actually open sourced it. Was it was it Palm? Was it HP? Was it LG? Um, so it looks like um, somebody's ported it over to the Pine Phone, and they have it running on the Pine Phone Dev Kit. Um, a video of which I will put in the show notes as well. Um, it's quite stuttery. It's quite early days. Uh, the guy says there's kind of some visual artifacts. Um, but it it is running, so it's just a case of refining the the port. Um, from from now on, essentially, uh, once once you have it ported over and you can you can see the visuals coming up on the on the screen of the dev kit, then then that's that's your first hurdle and then it's just a case of refinement after that. So don't expect it the it, the current state of it to be in perfect working order. He says there's visual artifacts, it's a bit slow and responsive to his touch. But uh, all of that will will come with further development. But it's it's good to see that the the Pine Phone uh, dev kit is getting things like uh, Ubuntu Touch. It's getting uh, post market OS running Plasma Mobile. It's getting this Luna OS, which is a continuation of of Web OS. So it's 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 quite good. Uh, um, and I think rumor is that there there might be um Sailfish OS coming to it as well, but don't quote me on that. Uh, but it's it's good to have options. Um, whenever the Pine Phone gets does get released. Mark, uh, you have a boner. Um, <laughs> never gets old. <laughs> right here, um, right now. <laughs> Ubuntu Touch OTA nine. That, that's release. the reason why we we call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't come up with that. I just want to make that clear. Um, <laughs> uh, Ubuntu Touch OTA 9 release, because Ubuntu Touch is fucking awesome, you have written. Absolutely. Um, I I use Ubuntu Touch all the time as it's my daily driver. Like I have a business phone, but my own phone is running Ubuntu Touch and has oh, been hardcore. for the last few years. And um, I just oh, cool. absolutely love it, you know. What are you running it on? Nexus, uh, Nexus Five, isn't it? Uh, no, the One Plus. Oh, the One Plus One. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I'm actually using a, a BQ uh, Four Point Five, and it's a bit limited because of the one gig of RAM. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I still love it. I mean, it it works as a phone. Now, I did actually notice I went to set my alarm <laughs> there the other morning and it wouldn't work for me. But, um, and, but, uh, and I checked it up and it's a, it's a known bug. Uh, but before that, only a few weeks ago, I'd set the alarm and it was grand. So it must be one of the, the latest updates that I'm on because I'm following the, uh, it's not the actual, I think I'm on the developer channel, you know, so I'm getting all the, the latest goodness all the time. I think, yeah, I think you can get a developer and there's beta as well. I think I've switched over from the stable over to the beta channel. Um, or no, the, the, or, the RC channel, sorry. The RC uh, channel. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, it's about 80 to 90 percent there for me. It'd be little things that are, uh, annoying, but, uh, unfortunately, I don't see 
ported over anytime soon would be things like a, a banking application or uh, WhatsApp or something like that. I think there was a, a, a solution for WhatsApp and then the, in the latest, uh, I forget what it was called, but, um, there was a, an application that, that, uh, that, uh, had access to the, uh, WhatsApp and then they, in the latest version, they just says, uh, we couldn't get it to work or something. So they, they had to remove it in, uh, in a update, updated version after that. I was looking through their, their change log and they had to, unfortunately, they had to remove the WhatsApp support. Um, who, some people in our, in our, who needs WhatsApp? <laughs> Yeah, it's that kind of thing, isn't it? You really have to, you know, yeah, WhatsApp is definitely the middle ground. Like, it's like, okay, I guess I'll use it. Like, I don't really want to use it. I prefer everyone just use maybe Telegram or Signal or something. But mm. but no, I don't know. Uh, you know, te- te- you know, it, it's like 40% Telegram, 60% WhatsApp for me. Like, uh, Yeah. Because that's, that's kind of where I'm at because I, I don't use WhatsApp at all. And, um, like the amount of groups I'm missing out on, cause work groups kind of, uh, um, uh, playing soccer groups, they're, <laughs> they're all on WhatsApp, you know? So, and I'm saying, no man, use Telegram, use Signal. And they're like, what's that? You know, and no one is prepared to even try them. And you're just going like, these are better platforms, you know? Not that I know what WhatsApp is like because I don't use it, but anyway, you know, it's, it's just annoying that people kind of get stuck into, you know, using it, I suppose because everyone else is using it, but I, I find it's very fickle because, you know, once the next shiny comes along, everyone, like I suppose it was Facebook Messenger first, then it was WhatsApp. What'll it be next? Hopefully it'll be Signal or Telegram for, for my sake anyway. I see all sorts of people now that I know joining Telegram. Like, Excellent. I will see, like, you know, the way it gives you the notification when one of your contacts joins Telegram. Yeah. Like, right. uh, I get, I get those like once, twice a week nowadays. Like, a lot of people seem to be getting on it. Like, people I never thought would have even heard of it. I don't get that at all, unfortunately. I, I wish people would switch over to it, <laughs> um, on my, on my personal context, but I, hardly anybody I know is, is on it. Uh, other than, uh, like, my geeky, nerdy friends are, are, uh, would, would use Signal, would use, uh, would use Telegram. But other than that, um, virtually everyone is on WhatsApp. And, um, Mark, as you're saying, the social groups, if you're, if you want to go join your local soccer, club or a bun- bunch of guys um yeah going out and they're they're playing kicking around um a kind of a football at the weekend like meeting up on a saturday just uh, like a, a social group to to get a bit of exercise come camaraderie and that sort of thing there are 90 percent of the time they're going to be organizing it on whatsapp, WhatsApp yeah. so i think we'll uh start to wrap it up there um as always we'll finish off with how you can get in touch um obviously i'd like to thank mark for coming along um You're for welcome. filling in for mike it was great yeah so hopefully you know mike can listen to this on monday and he can uh, he can see what it's like for the on the other side like that should be interesting um <laughs> i hope so uh, i hope we didn't like slag him off too much um so uh linuxlads.com forward slash support that's where you can go if you'd like to contribute to the podcast. Um, obviously, it does cost us a little bit of money to host and uh, produce the podcast. So any donations will be very, very gratefully received. Um, if you want to catch up with us and get in touch with us, feel free. We don't care if you text us directly on Telegram or some shit. Like, honestly, just do it. Like, you can get us on all the short links, uh, linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram. Uh, forward slash twitter forward slash facebook forward slash mastodon so they'll all get you to those networks um you can also email us on show at linuxlads.com so any feedback or any suggestions or anything you didn't like give us a shout um so we'll wrap this this baby up um thanks for coming guys thanks for being here mark and um, we have been the linux lads i've been shane i've been connor and i've been mark Thanks very much. See you later.